drop it. Hi, good day everyone. I am your teacher car and in this video, you will learn how to identify skills, actions, and movements. When people jump, throw a baseball, hit a table tennis ball, walk in an artificial limb, play the piano, or dance, they are engaged in the performance of a type of human skill or what we call as motor skills. As you engage in this video, you will find it useful to draw general conclusions applying what you learn to a broad range of motor skills. Let us identify skills, actions, and movements. Several terms in the motor learning literature are related to the term motor skills. These are skills, actions, and movements. Each term is applied in a particular way. We should recognize and use each one correctly. Skill. It is commonly used word that we use and this is a task that has a specific goal to achieve. For example, we say that addition is a fundamental skill of mathematics or playing piano is a skill that takes practice. Of these two examples, the skill of piano playing includes a motor skills because it is a skill that requires voluntary body and or, or our limbed movement to achieve the goal, which is, of course, to play the piano. Look at this way. The skill of playing piano involves the goal of striking the correct key in the proper sequence and at the appropriate time, and it requires finger and hand movement to achieve that goal. In the modern learning and control literature, a term that has become gradually more common to dissipate a specific motor skill is the term actions. For our objective, we will use the term as synonymous with skills, that is, action are goal-directed activities that consist of body and our limb movements. Another way of defining an action is to say that it is a family of movements. Some have referred to an action as equivalence class of movements. Movements. In the modern learning and control literature, the term movements indicate behavioral characteristics of a specific limb or a combination of limbs. In this sense, movements are component parts of skills and actions. A variety of different limb behavior characteristics can occur that still enable a person to walk successfully. For example, our limbs move differently in a distinct ways when we walk on a concrete sidewalk and when we walk in an icy sidewalk or in a sandy beach. However, although the actual movements may differ, the skill we perform in each of these different situations is walking. The important point here is that a variety of movements can produce the same action and thereby accomplish the same goal. For example, walking up a set of stairs is an action. The goal is to get to the top of the stair, right? However, to achieve this goal, a person can use a variety of different movements person can take one step at a time very slowly or say one step at a time very slowly or take each step very quickly or take two steps at a time and so on in each situation the action is the same but the movements 
the person produces to achieve the goal of the action are different. There are several characteristics that are common to motor skills. First, there is a goal to achieve. This means that motor skills have a purpose. Sometimes, you will see the term action goal to refer to the goal of a motor skill. Second, motor skills of interest in the text are performed voluntarily. In other words, we are not considering reflexes as skills. Although, an eye blink may have a purpose and involve movement, it occurs voluntarily and it's therefore not a skill in the sense in which we are using the term. Third, a motor skill requires body and or, or limb movement to accomplish the goal of the task. This characteristics is especially important because it is the basis for distinguishing motor skills from other types of human skills. For example, although calculating math problems is a skill, it does not require body and or, or limb movement. We commonly refer to the type of skill used for math problems as a cognitive skill. One additional characteristic further identifies the types of motor skills of interest in this text. They need to be learned in order for a person to achieve the goal of the skill. The piano playing, for example, clearly has these characteristics. But consider a skill like walking. Although walking may seem to be something that humans do naturally, it must be learned by the infant who is attempting to move in his or her environment by this new and exciting means of locomotion. And walking is a skill some people may need to learn. Example, people who have strokes or hip or knee joint replacement as well as people who must learn to walk with an artificial legs. Why do we need to distinguish movements from skills and actions? These are the three reasons why it is important and useful to consider movements as distinct from skills and actions. Number one, people learn skills and actions. Although people must produce movements to perform a skill or action, different people may produce different movements characteristics to achieve the same action goal. For example, how many golfers swing a golf club exactly alike? All golfers must learn the action of hitting a golf ball, right? But each person will likely have some unique movement and characteristics. It's the same way in playing table tennis and of course, in playing basketball. Second, people adapt movement characteristics to achieve a common goal. Why do golfers have different swing characteristics but achieve the same action goal? People differ in a physical features that limits the movement characteristics they can produce to perform skill. This physical feature limitation is an especially critical concern to take into account when working with people in physical rehabilitation settings. Although there may be a preferred way for people to walk, certain people or certain sensory or motor impairments may not allow a person to walk in that way. But people can make movement characteristic adjustments and still be able to successfully perform. Third, people evaluate actions and movements with different types of measures. We typically evaluate actions in terms of measures that relate to the outcome of the action. 
such as the distance of a person when he or she walked, the length of time to a person to a certain distance, or the number of points a basketball shoot or football shoot was worth. Movements, on the other hand, are evaluated by measures that relate to specific characteristics of body, hand, and or or muscle activity, which is kinematic, kinetic, and, and electromyographic measures. That ends our video. I hope you identify now what is skill, movement, and action. Thank you and God bless. Drop it.